and bibliographic material. While the late antique historians will connect and graph the Sasanian Empire into, the, into a larger framework and ask questions and approach the empire in a way that is far more advanced than anything done so far for ancient Iranian history. Islamic historians can demonstrate and bring an understanding to the late Sasanian history and a reasoning as to why the Sasanians are important for the history of Southwest Asia as the foundation for what may be called medieval history of the Near East. That is, situating Sasanian history between these disciplines and in them is all good and beneficial and I think should be supported. It is only in this way that we can make sure that interest in the Sasanians, an empire in which only three monographs were dedicated to it, that is a continuous history, in the 19th and 20th century would become more of interest in academia. This is based on my, of course, personal observation and experience as someone who wanted to study Sasanian history from the very first day of my graduate work in the 1990s. When I began studying Sasanian history, there was only one university in the United States that offered the history of the Sasanians, only one university. Uh, taught by Michael Morney, which we already have uh, talked about, who was interested in really late Sasanian, early Islamic Iraq. Of course, uh, Peter Brown on the other coast, uh, in Princeton, was training late antique uh, students uh, who were interested in the Sasanians, but through the Syriac, of course, and Greek tradition, such as Joel Walker, who's a quite a fine uh, scholar. At UCLA, where I also continued uh, studying, I had the privy of having a professor in the Iranian languages, Hans-Peter Schmidt, so uh, we got our Middle Iranian and Old Iranian training through that. And I finally, in 1993, um, we had a late antique historian, which I ended up studying with her as well, Claudia Rapp. So I also went the route of late antique history, Iranian studies, and you might say Islamic or late Sasanian history. Thus how I became a Sasanian history historian was through the training of mainly an Islamist or Islamic historian, an Iranian philologist, as well as a, as a late antique historian. For none of these scholars the Sasanian Empire was their focus, but each used part of the Sasanians for their own research. One understanding the Muslim conquest of a land ruled by the Sasanians, the other the nemesis of the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantine Empire, and one the language, religion, and culture of the Sasanian was his preview. Even when I had a fellowship where I studied Sasanian coins at the American Numismatic Society in New York, my teacher Michael Bates was primarily an Arab Sasanian scholar who did early Islamic numismatics, and that's how I studied Sasanian records. My point here is not to promote my professional genealogy, but rather make a point that is I was the closest candidate for doing Sasanian history at the time where there was no Sasanian history. In fact, I would now say that there was never a field of Sasanian studies or history and it was being slowly forgotten as I went through my training. Till all of these fields began to take interest in the history of the Near East and Eurasia from 200 to 750. This has brought to life the study of the Sasanian Empire in ways that was unimaginable in the 20th century. In a recent review by Peter Brown on three books, uh, these are new histories of late antiquity, uh, entitled Recovering the Submerged Worlds, uh, which was published this past summer in New York Review of Books, he eloquently points out the importance of works on the period which placed the Byzantine Empire in relations to the Sasanians and others. He states that in fact for people like him and those who worked on the period, the Sasanians were on the dark side of the moon. <coughs> the Sasanians are now slowly, I believe, beginning to come out of the dark side. As I mentioned, I am now the Bahari Fellow at Oxford, as Jane mentioned, at Oxford University which aims at creating the first, I think, chair in Sasanian studies or Sasanian history. One can say that the birth of, in fact, I think, Sasanian history will gain traction and Sasanians, I think, are going to leave the dark side of the moon and come to the light side of the moon <coughs> and we will have a new beginning. Thank you.